Hello, welcome or welcome back to my Croft Kitchen series. For the final episode of the series, I'm going to be looking at foraging. Keep watching to find out more. The first recipe I'm doing today is a rose hip and apple jam. Uh, the rose hips I picked from my garden. Uh, contrary to belief, they don't taste like roses. They're quite tangy in taste, almost like uh, hibiscus flowers. Uh, many people are probably not familiar with using them in cooking, but I'm going to show you how to prepare them today. The apples are dessert apples. I was hoping to get some crab apples, but I didn't allow myself enough time. So dessert apples are just as good for the recipe. So first of all, we're going to prepare our rose hips, and we do that by just removing the stalks. There's quite a few here. In fact, there's about 700 grams here of, of rose hips. Um, this part is the easy part of the rose hips. So that's the rose hips already prepared. One thing I like to do when making jams or marmalades is to turn on the radio because it can be rather laborious be it taking the hulls off the rose hips or uh, cutting zest up, it can, can be time consuming. So even my little recipe book, uh, the first thing I've got on the recipe is to turn on the radio. Give this a quick wash and we'll get on to the next stage. So now we've got the rose hips. Next thing we want to do is just cut them in half and we need to remove all these little seeds. Follow it quite easily with a teaspoon. Again, it is quite time consuming, but the end result is well worth it. Okay, there's been a change of plan. Um, even by my own standards, I wouldn't mind the odd seed in my jam, but this is just uh, a wee bit too much. So what I'm going to do is, we're going to we're going to serve the jam at the end. So I'm just going to put all the rose hips into our pan, heavy base pan, so it doesn't catch on the bottom as we're cooking. And to that, we're going to start with our apples. So we'll take our apples and just peel them very quickly. Now for just preparing the apples, just want to remove the centre core and discard that. But anyway, if anything does get through, it's not really a big deal because we've we'll changed the plan. We're going to serve it at the end. So, just manageable, suitable chunks into the pan. I'm quite glad I actually changed it because it was getting a bit laborious dealing with all them seeds and it has to be fun at, at the same time. So I think this kind of jam is ideal to keep it simple, nice and easy, stress free. But not affecting the end result either. To the pan, we're going to add about 200 ml of cold water and about 120, about 150 grams of sugar. So there we have the rose hips, the apple, sugar, and water in the pan. We're just going to take it up to a slow boil, and it's going to take about an hour to get to the right consistency. So I'm just going to pop the lid, not on completely, and we'll get back to that. And while the jam is cooking, we're now going to get on with the second dish today, which is our berry crumble. Now the berries I've got here, I received from my mother-in-law Jean. Thank you very much, Jean. Uh, I know you're probably jumping off the couch now that the name's been mentioned, but honestly, thank you very much. Um, we've got some lovely blackcurrants, gooseberries, and raspberries. 
Uh, we received these a while ago and uh, we have kept them in the freezer and just taken out what we need as we need it. Uh, so perfectly fine. What we're going to do is I'm just going to scatter our fruit into our bowl. Now, this is very simple, this crumble. I'm going to add a touch of sugar just because of the tartness of the, of the gooseberries and the blackcurrants. Don't need much, because I do like a wee bit of tartness in the fruit. And we mix, it's gentle. Already you can see the lovely the colours attracting the eyes. Now for the crumble topping, in the bowl I have 300 grams of plain flour, 150 grams of fine oatmeal, 100 grams of sugar and 200 grams of butter, which will just break up, which is at room temperature. I like to use salted butter in this. I believe it gives it a, a, a bit of consistency, a bit of crunch to the crumble and unsalted. We just want to go in with our hands, with our fingertips, until it almost resembles breadcrumbs. I know usually in previous recipes I've taken out the food processor for chopping onions and especially if you're doing a large quantity. But for this, for all the time it takes, I'd rather people go in using their hands on this. Especially new cooks who are, who are beginning to just learn their trade. I think it gives them more of an, uh, an appreciation and understanding and respect of such simple methods rather than starting getting the machines out right away. So open that, that about a minute now. You see it's, it's almost almost just coming together. As bread comes. Now this crumble recipe is the same recipe I've been using for many years now whatever I've been cooking. Now at this stage, what I'm looking for is, we're just coming past the breadcrumb stage. Now this is the part where I find the most important part. I'm just gonna lend the crumble topping its unique character. And it's the little clusters are going to start to appear. All of it will be the fine, a fine finish, but it's these little clusters which will showcase once the cooking is finished. There we have it. There we have it. Okay. Spread our crumble topping. And what I like about this pudding as well is it's a classic. I mean, you, you can use whatever berries or fruit or whatever you have at hand. But the best thing about it is once it comes out of the oven the kind of dish that you can just put in the middle of the table for everyone to help themselves to. We're not skimping on the crumble topping, but we don't want to put too much on either. Always just be more, be too stodgy. And we don't want to be mean with it either. There we have it. I do have some leftover, but what I can do with that is that can be frozen as is. 
and now it's ready for the oven. Preheated oven, 180 degrees for about 20, 25 minutes. Now in the final few moments of the jam being cooked, we have to prepare the jars uh, for, for bottling. Two things, firstly they have to be washed and then sterilised. We're going to sterilise them in a hot oven. The reason for this is uh, to kill the bacteria in the jars and for the jam to last a lot longer. So the next part of the recipe, as you can see, we are ready for putting into the food processor. And blessing. By well, just you can see that the cooking hasn't really done anything for the seeds. I think we made a good choice here. Much through as soon as possible and leaving seeds behind. Again, when we're talking about sterilizing the jars, everything that I'm using here just now has been sterilized the bowl, the ladle, the sieve, everything immaculately clean. We'll get the rest into the machine. Let's put the colour over it. There we have it. And now we're ready for jarring. Now we're ready to jar the, the jam. You can see the sheen on it shine. Just be very careful. Remember the jars are hot. You can use a funnel for this as well. Just a steady hand is just as good. I'm tasting this as we've been going along. What I've found is I think it would work well with some game birds or the game. Um, venison, duck, it's got a sharpness to it, a tartness to it, um, even some grilled fish. I'm going to stretch the third one. Out. So we don't want anything to harm about any oxygen. I'm 
we want to make sure as well as we want it to be neat and clean we won't win any prizes for sloppy finishes Rosehip and apple jelly. You can see the colour against the black lids in the jar. I think it looks fantastic. All we have to do now is label and date them. So there we have the crumble all good to go. What I've actually done is as well, I talked to you earlier about the little clusters on the top being a nice little sort of touch. I actually added a couple of extra bits in there. So there we have two fantastic dishes made from foraged ingredients, our heartwarming mixed berry crumble and our apple and rosehip jam. Little yield, a lot of work and effort, but fantastic flavour. I want to finish up by saying thank you for watching my series of Croft Kitchen. Uh, the response I've had has been overwhelming in person and on the internet. Um, hope to see you for series two soon. And just like I say, it's been fantastic doing this, very enjoyable um, and highlighting the fantastic projects we have on the island. And I hope to work on that a bit more um, in the near future. So thank you all very much and we shall speak soon. Enjoy.